You got yourself a highlight blowout? No problem. Check this out. Selective color. We're going to add some tone to that. We're going to add some yellow to that. Add some green to that. We're gonna add some red to that. And then we're going to take our brush and we're going to brush this out so it looks nice and clean. And then we're going to go boom to add a nice little transition there. And that highlight blowout that was ugly and awful is now nicely feathered in with some color. Not too long ago, I did a video tutorial showing how to fix hot spots on portrait photos where the flash would leave this you know, bright white area and how you could fill that in using the selective color adjustment layer. I did also show how to use that on landscapes, but it wasn't exactly the best image to show and the internet told me. I don't know about you, what you do for a living, but my hardest job is actually finding images that are gonna work for a tutorial. If I find images too easy, that that thing just works beautifully, then people throw you under the bus for using something too simple. Simple. If I try to do it on a harder image, people are like, wait, that effect didn't show me anything at all. But if you pick the right image, no one says anything. <laughs> so I picked three images that I think are going to be right, and I'm just going to jump right in. First, I'm going to show you the technique. Then as I go through the other images, I'm going to explain it. So what we need to do is we need to open up a selective color adjustment layer. Okay, With this selective color adjustment layer, we want to go into the white area. We have a white blowout here. If you look here, this is a white blowout. It is pure white. Now, I totally understand that blowouts are going to happen, and I even tell people to embrace blowouts sometimes. And there's many ways that you can embrace those. So just know that if you look at the sun with your eyeballs, it's a big white ball, right? It's going to be a blowout. Don't try to tone compress that to make it look like something that it's not. Instead, use this technique. So what we need to do is because that is all white, there we need to add black to it so when i go into the white section here make sure that this is not set to relative if i'm color grading that's going to be on relative because it's more subtle that's all you really need to know if you're doing this technique you want it to be on absolute so it draws the exact data for white there so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to move up this until that gets a little bit in the black range and that is what i'm talking about that's exactly what i need to fix this now that's typically something called tone compression that we would see in the hdr days where you just get like you're telling white to be something that it's not. But what we need to do here is move this up so we can get some data in there, some black in there. Now what we need to do is add some yellow to that. Now what we see in the sky is that that is not just all yellow. It's even got a little bit of green in it. So I'm going to move this over here and move that over just a little bit to add a little bit of green to it. And then to offset kind of the greenish color that I'm getting there, or cyanish color, it's kind of a cyanish yellow, I'm going to move cyan to the left, which is going to add and incorporate red there. Okay, And you can see that we have almost an exact match. I might need a little bit more of that green. Yep, perfect. We have an exact match right here for that sky in the background. And we filled in that highlight blowout with a beautiful color of yellow there. Now, I know that this would be unrealistic and so do you because guess what? That is a sun and it's going to blow out. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to click on the mask, make our brushes a little bit smaller, about the size of what we want the sun to be, and just boom, hit it right there just like that. So now we added the sun back in there, but we don't have that blowout that surrounds it. Pretty impressive, isn't it? I think so. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go over to this image here. Now, the blowout that we have here is right here in this sun area here. A very tricky image for me to deal with. Very strong sunset. The foreground was almost completely black. Even taking three exposures, this one didn't really work out too well for me. So what do I need to do? Well, I mean, most people are going to lambast me on the comments and say, I should have shot it better. Well, I guess what? I missed that opportunity. So guess what? I'm going to fix it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the selective color adjustment layer. This time I'm explaining it a little bit more slowly now that you've watched it on another image. We want to go into the white area here. You cannot use something like HSL for this. So some people think, well, when you're working with color, let me just use HSL. Well, HSL is only going to modify the hue, saturation, or luminance of a given color. And we don't even have any whites, midtones, or darks here. So selective color is the way to go. HSL is out. Now, the reason why I choose absolute over relative is relative moves slower it basically takes an assessment of the color that you're telling it to modify and it says okay this this color has a little bit of this color in it a little bit of this color in it and a little bit of this color in it so as you move the sliders it's only going to modify that color based on the colors that are within it so it works a little bit slower whereas absolute just says hold on a second you're in the whites i'll select all the whites check this out let's just go to town 
have fun. It selects the whole swatch of white and doesn't factor in the, the other individual colors or tonal values that might be in there quite as much as relative does. Okay, there's a whole bunch of math that's around this, but you don't necessarily need to know that math. You just need to know that relative is subtle, absolute is absolute, right? You learn at a real young age not to drink that straight from the bottle, if you know what I'm talking about. So now the next thing we need to know is what's happening with these sliders. I'm gonna put a graphic over top of this so that you'll be able to see the adjustments that I'm making and what color I'm adding to it. You won't see this in Photoshop. Photoshop does not have this ability to do this, but we need to know color theory in order for this to work. So what happens is on the opposite side of cyan on the color wheel is red. On the opposite side of magenta on the color wheel is green. On the opposite side of yellow on the color wheel is blue. So if we move it this way, we're gonna add more yellow to those white areas. If we move it this way, we're gonna add more green or magenta. If we move it this way, we're gonna add more cyan or more red, okay? To that very specific area there. Now, the reason why I first start by giving it some tonal value and some tonal data is it gives these colors some base to stick to, okay? So what happens here, if I move it this way, the whites are gonna get more white. If I move it this way, they're gonna get a little bit more tannish color, okay? This is called tone compression and you don't want that. That is a negative thing. If you have a highlight blowout, I would much rather prefer to see this in your image than to see this in your image, okay? So we'll go up just a little bit here just to get a little bit of tonal value in there. We're gonna add a little bit of yellow here, not move it this way, because that's gonna add blue. We're gonna add a little bit of yellow here, and then we're gonna mix in a little bit of that green, and then come back here and mix in a little bit of that red. And if you look at that, we actually have color now that has been added into an area that didn't have color before and was actually quite distracting. Now this can be controlled in two ways. After you've got it this way, you can then come down here and drop the opacity a little bit to blend it and get the best of both worlds, which is kind of what I prefer to do. Or you'll come up here to this black slider here and move this down a little bit and that will control how much of that tonal value is there and added there. And here's the color value. So it's a great way to add some nice color to a highlight blowout where it wasn't before. Now, does this work on big highlight blowouts like this one? At first, I was going to say, no, don't even attempt it. But I think it does look pretty good here. So we're gonna do the same thing we did on the other two images. We're gonna add a selective color adjustment layer. We're gonna make sure that it's set to absolute. We're gonna bring this up to add some tonal data there, okay? So give it a little bit of tonal data by adding a little bit of black to there. We're gonna bring up the yellow, okay? Now you can skip the green if you want and just try to bring down the red, but it needs a little bit of that green there to kind of get that yellowish kind of glowing uh, aura of color there. And we'll bring this down a little bit more in the reds to kind of get more of that uh, orangish color happening there, maybe even a little bit more yellow. Now again, this is very strong and this is not the kind of blowout that I would want to color in this way. So now we need to think of like creative masking for this one. Uh, and if we look at this, it's gonna do this to every highlight in the image, even in the water. So this is, a, for discretion purposes, you're gonna need to know this. We're gonna make, bring this up a little bit with our brush, make it a little bit larger and brush out this area here in the water. Now, another way that you can get this to transition nice and smoothly, so it doesn't just look like a big swatch of color that's being added to that highlight, is you can make your brush a little bit bigger and just kind of get creative with this and just hit it a little bit here in some of those highlight areas that need to be highlighted anyway, right? So we hit this a little bit in this area here. We'll maybe make our brush a little bit smaller, maybe hit it again here and give it a little bit of variation there. You know, we know that when we see this type of stuff happening in a landscape, we do see a little bit of brightness that hits along the edges and it's okay to have that in there because that's what our eyes would see while we're on location. But again, how do we control this? I would come in here, the opacity and drop this down a little bit, taper it in and make it transition nicely into that space. That's a much better look for that blowout in my personal opinion than just having this big swatch of white there. As you can see, this worked very well on just clouds. It works very well on an open blowout and it also works very well on an area where you need to make the sun look a little bit better and you can even add a sun there by just hitting a little bit in that mask with a little bit of black to, to make that white come back where the sun would actually be very bright and potent. If you like this video, please go ahead and take a look at the video here, which is actually the original video about how to do this in portraits. And if you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing. I like to take difficult things in Photoshop and make them seemingly simple so that you can use them in your workflow today.